Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Part of God's Word we'll consider together this morning is our Old Testament lesson for today. It's taken from the second book of the Kings, the sixth chapter, beginning with verse 15. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, O Lord, open his eyes so he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. This is God's word. Dear Christian friend, the things we expect and the things that actually happen aren't always exactly similar. We live in a sinful world. And the things that life throws at us can be unexpected, unpleasant, and sometimes deadly. In our own neighborhood, we found that out. Only five miles away in Peshtigo, the young woman lost her life. I don't know if she saw that coming. I don't know if she was ready. But I do know that those kinds of things will continue to happen until the Lord returns. How do we prepare for that? How do we deal with that? Because so many things are outside of our control. So many things are arrayed against us that have more power than we will ever have. What can we possibly do? I think Elisha's servant is a good example of what we can. And Elisha is a good example of what we will do. Elijah's servant got up in the morning and got up to kind of a surprise. The night before, the city was just the city. The next morning, it's surrounded by an army. And of course, the servant does what I think we can all relate to. He panics. He doesn't know what to do. So he appeals to his master. He appeals to Elijah. What are we going to do now? And of course, it may well have been a rhetorical question, because after all, what can two people do against an entire army? It was a call of despair, it was a call of helplessness. And I think we know what that feels like. There are things that make us anxious. Things that make us afraid. Sometimes even things for which we are prepared. Last Thursday, you guys went through that. Things for which you were prepared, but you're still like, what are we going to do? This morning, what are we going to do? And that's not a bad question. As long as we listen to the answer. Because it's going to be a question that you should ask tomorrow morning. And the morning after that, and the morning after that. And there's going to be a whole host of entities that will offer you an answer. Your friends may offer you one answer. Your parents may offer you another. Your school may offer you another. Your job may offer you another. So to whom do we listen? Well, you already know the answer to that. We listen to the Word of God. Because the Word of God is where we find truth. The Word of God is where we find power. The Word of God is where we find the path of blessing and success. And so when he answered, Lord, what shall we do? Elisha had a really good answer. He said, don't be afraid. And you've heard that before. Don't be afraid. The reason 
Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. This guy is not alone. It looks like he's alone. And when Elisha's servant looked around, it looked like he was alone too. It looked like he was alone, outnumbered, and about to die. Or worse. And he had no idea what he should do. But the thing is, we do. We know that those who are with us are more than those who are with them. In fact, it only takes one to be with us, to be greater than anything that this world, to be greater than anything that Satan can ever throw against us. Because Jesus is here. And Jesus walks with you every single day of your life. Because Jesus loves you. And will take care of you. So whether we're dealing with wildfires in California, whether we're dealing with murder in our own neighborhood, we can be ready. Because we don't have to face it alone. If God decides that someone is going to end my life today, I'm ready. If God decides that He's going to let me live for another 120 years, I'm ready. And it's not because I'm such an amazing person. You guys all know better than that. It's because my God is an amazing God. And He has promised that He will never leave me. So I am never alone. And I never have to worry. I do worry. But I don't have to. Because God has a hand. And then Elisha prayed. And he said, O Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And then the Lord opened the servant's eyes. And he looked and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. And you can imagine, I think, one of two positions. One, wouldn't it be awesome to be in the position of that servant whom the Lord, whose, whose eyes the Lord opened so they could see all these amazing things that he could finally have the confidence and know God is here. What do we have to be afraid of? And if you're familiar with the story, you know how it played out. Elisha walked out and said, who are you looking for? And they said, Elisha. And God struck him blind. So they sent him. So he took him back to Samaria as prisoners. One guy. That's amazing stuff. And the, Hagar, the, the servant of Elisha was privileged to see that. And as amazing as it would be to be that servant, wouldn't it be even better to be Elisha? The one who prayed to open the eyes of others. The one with whom the power of God rested. The one from whom the truth of God was heard. That's what we pray for you. Not that you can remain students for the rest of your life. But that you can be prophets of God. That you can share the things that you know. That you can find the ministry that God has chosen for you. And that's the same prayer that we have for everybody in this house. Because we all got stuff to deal with. And if we had everybody come up and share those things, the things, the hard things, the confusing things, the desperation, or the things of desperation, I don't think we would ever finish. Because we live in a simple world. The question is, are you ready? And if you're ready, then what does your confidence lie? And what's your next step? As far as I'm often, the next step is, well, I'm done with that. And now I'll deal with life without Jesus. Does that make sense to you? Is that what Elisha told him? 
And you know, we got these chariots of fire, we got these horses of fire, but ah, you don't need them. Go out and face the army yourself. That doesn't make any sense. But that is precisely what you're going to be tempted to do. To take all the things that you have just learned, all the things that God has revealed to you, and leave them behind for something this world can offer. We all know what that temptation feels like. And we all know the pain that comes from trying to face life without God. But by His grace, we have the opportunity to face life with Him. To remember that those with us are more than those that are with them. To remember that Jesus Christ came to be your Savior, called you with the Gospel, enlightened you with His gift, and that God Himself walks with you. Don't forget that. Because there's going to be mornings like this, and afternoons, and evenings, and nights, when you wonder, what ever shall I do? And you want to have a prophet with you. Or better yet, be a prophet. Call on the name of the Lord your God, and He will deliver you, and you will honor Him. Because we don't know what life's going to throw at us, but we do know that God can handle it. So we stay with Him, and we pray with Him, and we read His Word, and we study it, and we memorize it, and we share it, and we come to this place where we'll hear it again. Where we can encourage each other. We can walk together. And that's a little bit of a visible <coughs> illustration of walking with the family of God. Together, all the way home to heaven. Peace of God that transcends all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. <coughs> Amen. And now let's confess together the faith that we share in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of